Chào mừng các bạn, chào mừng đã quay trở lại với kênh học IELTS cùng IELTS Thầy là Huy Bạn tiếp tục giải đề suốt nhiều tháng liền bất kể trình độ đang ở đâu Bạn nghe thật nhiều, chăm chỉ những kết quả chẳng cải thiện được bao nhiêu và nhanh như là mong đợi Nguyên nhân nằm ở chỗ và không nhận ra vấn đề của mình Bạn không biết lý do tại sao mình nghe không giỏi Bạn không tập trung giải quyết ba vấn đề được nhắc đến ở bài trên Bạn liên tục tập luyện không có phương hướng dẫn đến tốn kém thời gian và hao mòn ý chí của bản thân Nào, hãy cùng thầy tiếp tục đến với bài luyện nghe Instructions. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions. And you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. Write all of your answers in the listening question booklet. At the end of the real test, You will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section 1 of your booklet. Section 1. You are going to hear a conversation which happened in a travel agency. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Before we start the test, look at the example of your question booklet and listen to the tape. Hi. I would like to make a reservation for a round-trip plane ticket from London to New York. Welcome to the Student Travel Agency. London to New York. Let me see if we have any student specials for that flight. Yes, we do, in fact. What days would you like to fly? I am looking for a flight around the 10th of October or so. In the tape, the man says he will fly from London to New York. Therefore, A is the correct answer. Now we will play the recording. Listen to the tape and answer questions 1 to 5. Hi. I would like to make a reservation for a round-trip plane ticket from London to New York. Welcome to the Student Travel Agency. London to New York. Let me see if we have any student specials for that flight. Yes, we do, in fact. What days would you like to fly? I am looking for a flight around the 10th of October or so. And how about your return date? Ideally, the 31st of October. Let me check our computers to see if these dates are available. Are you looking for economy class or first class? Economy class will be just fine. We have an open flight on the 10th, but for your returning flight, the 31st of October is already fully booked. If you want to upgrade to first class, there are openings for the 31st. Just a few seats left, though. How much do I have to add for first class? First class will be around 20 to 25% more. Well, that is not worth it. I would rather just fly on another day. Do I have any other options? There are open seats back to London on the 1st of November. There are openings for first class that day, too. No, I won't be able to do that because I have to work. Is there anything before the 31st? Maybe the 30th or 29th? Let me check. You can fly on the 29th, but not the 30th. Hmm, the 29th is a little bit early. Is there any way I can be on a waiting list of some sort? Of course, but you should still confirm a return date just to be safe. Okay. How about if I book a return date on the 29th? and add my name to the waiting list for the 31st. Can I do that? Sure, I can do that for you. Do you also want to add your name on the waiting list for the 30th also? I would recommend this in the scenario that you do not get the flight for the 31st. That is a good idea. How much will the round trip cost? I will calculate your price for you. Your total will be £565, not including tax. Now look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 6 to 10. That's not too bad. Is there any discount for students? That is already including the discount. Without the discount, the price is easily over £600. OK, that sounds good then. Please put me down for those dates. I will need your information. 
Name and student identification number, please. Kenneth Connolly. Student ID 92123020. Your phone number, please. 87052109. Please tell me your mailing address. 354 Westchester Drive, London. Thank you very much, sir. How would you like to pay for the ticket? I think I will pay in cash. Well, you don't need to pay right now, just when you come to pick up the tickets. You will need to pick up the tickets at least two weeks before departure. That is no problem. One quick question. What happens if for some reason I need to cancel my trip? The student discount tickets are unfortunately non-refundable. However, if your cancellation is before 24 hours of take-off time, then you can reschedule your flight for another day. If the cancellation is within 24 hours, then you forfeit your ticket. I understand. Well, thank you very much. I will see you next week. See you then. This is the end of Section 1. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers. Now turn to Section 2. Section 2. You are going to hear a lecture about the Miners Hotel. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 11 to 14. Good evening and welcome to the Miner Hotel. We are pleased to have you as our guest. I will give you a brief information session to tell you everything you need to know to make this a pleasant stay. The Miner Hotel was built in the 1850s, during the Gold Rush period also nicknaming our state the Golden State. People from all over the country and even from other countries came to seek their fortune here in these hills, creating cities overnight. In this city, many Gold Rush hotels soon opened up. This particular hotel was built in 1851, but was destroyed during an earthquake. It was rebuilt in 1995 to recreate the feel of the Gold Rush, complete with articles and actual photographs from during the 1850s. Our hotel is divided into two buildings, one called the Gold Tower and the other is named the Fortune Tower. You will be staying in the Fortune Tower on the 25th floor, complete with great views of the city. Your room is the best room in the hotel, complete with private living room and hot tub. Here is your room card. On the card it will say FT, meaning Fortune Tower. On the bottom of the card, it will say 2515. The 25 stands for the 25th floor, and the 15 stands for the 15th room on that particular floor. Now look at questions 15 to 20. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 15 to 20. There are emergency exits in both towers of the hotel. They are located on the south side, opposite the elevators. Please use these in case of a fire or other emergency. We have some special events happening this week. Our Miner's Diner is offering a special Miner's Buffet dinner this Friday and Saturday for only $20 per person. This special includes all food, not including drinks and alcohol, and shows for the night. The buffet will be available from 5 to midnight. Because of the historical significance of our hotel, there are some special rules. The first rule is that there is no smoking allowed anywhere in the building, not even in your own room. This is not only to ensure the safety and health of our guests, but also the furniture and pictures can be easily damaged by smoke and other harsh treatment. Please remember that there are items of furniture over a hundred years old here, so respect the rules by not smoking. Secondly, please do not take pictures using a flash of any of the drawings and paintings in the rooms or hallways as they are old and fragile. We are doing our best to preserve a national treasure, so please help us in doing so. Lastly, you will only have one set of towels and bed sheets per three days. This is to conserve the water supply, as there are frequent droughts this high up in the hills. If there are any further questions, the staff of the hotel will be available to answer your questions. In the event that no one is able to answer your questions, I will also be available from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. each day in the concierge. I hope you enjoy your stay here with us. Thank you very much. This is the end of Section 2. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers. Now turn to Section 3.
Section 3. You are going to hear a conversation between an interviewer and a professor. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 21 to 26. Today I'm here with Professor Nitik, who is our new university president. He has been a professor for 20 years and teaches many of the best classes on campus. I know many of you have had him as a teacher and know of his brilliance. Good morning, Professor Nitik. Thank you for stopping by the student station. Thank you for having me here. It is always great to get to meet many of the students who are involved with our school. I haven't been here since two years ago. Yes, I remember at that time you were still teaching every semester. Two years later, you are only teaching every once in a while. But it seems like you are still always busy. The administration world is just as busy as the teaching world for you. How do you stay in touch with the university, even with the change in your everyday duties? I try to stay in touch with what is popular with the university students. I usually spend time with as many students as I can. They usually give me insight into what the new concerns and beliefs are for the new generation. On top of that, I try to be as youthful as I can. I consider myself to be youthful, at least from my age. So I always have a good time and try to stay young. I try my best to not just be a teacher, but also participate in university life. Interesting. So, are you still doing lots of academic work, or are you mostly concentrating on administrative affairs? Well, I mostly do administrative affairs now. But that doesn't mean that I still don't have a very deep interest in academic matters. I often visit other campuses around the world and meet other professors in my field. I learn the most by travelling and seeing the different places of the world and the different fields of thought. I even did a television programme last month in Manchester. Will you be on television any time soon, then? Well, you can call the television station and see if I will be on television any time soon. Maybe I will be on the news report. I don't think it is really that significant, though. Oh, really? That sounds great. I will remember to look out for you. Let's move on. With all your busy travelling recently, how do you find time for your personal life? I try to keep my university life separate from my personal life. Sometimes it's hard to find time to just take my wife and three kids out for a family dinner, but usually we all manage to get together every few days. I'm taking a few weeks off next month to take my family down to South America, to Brazil for a few days. I can't wait to just sit on the beach. Wow, that sounds like a wonderful trip. Professor Nitik, could you tell the audience a little about what goes on in an average day of a university administrator? <laughs> An average day? Oh, I don't think there is such thing as an average day for me. The last few weeks I've been travelling all the time. I can be in Los Angeles in the morning and in New York by the afternoon and back to Los Angeles by the evening. Sometimes I will spend the whole week at a new university, showing the new administrators the ins and outs of running a university. Sometimes I can spend the whole day in the office on the phone. So there really is no average day for me. I guess that is because I do so many different tasks. Sorry to let all the viewers down, but that is the plain truth. Now look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 27 to 30. Well, I guess I can sum it up for them. You are a busy man. That is probably a good description. So, are there any immediate plans for the coming few weeks? Well, I'm in Los Angeles for the next two days, and then I fly to Colorado to meet a new prospective professor for our university. I will be in Colorado for about a week. Then I go to Japan for the next ten days to meet with our university branch in Japan about record sales there. After that, I return to Los Angeles for a week, just in time for the graduation of the class of 2001. There you have it, my next month's schedule. Thank you very much, Professor Nitik. I always enjoy having you on our show. We hope to have you back on our show next time. This is the end of Section 3. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers.
Section 4. In this section, you will hear a talk given by Don Parker, an expert on computer security, about the computer criminals. As you listen to the talk, fill in the gaps numbered 31 to 40. First, you will have some time to look at the notes below. Now listen to the talk. Hi there. As an expert on computer security, my job is to oversee and analyse the phenomenon in computer users. Computer has been commonplace in our daily life, make our life and work efficiently and lively. However, with the development of the computer technology, computer crime has come to arise more people's attention. Now, in respect of this topic, I will present some of my view and studies. What kinds of people are perpetrating most of the information technology crime? According to my research, over 80% may be employees. The rest are outside users, hackers and crackers and professional criminals. It is amazing that employees amount for this large portion. Let us see them in detail. Employees. Employees are those with the skills, the knowledge and the access to do bad things. Dishonest or disgruntled employees pose a far greater problem than most people have realised. To most supervisors and some experts, they worry that dishonest employees or outsiders can more easily intercept communications or steal company trade secrets. Workers may use information technology for personal profit or steal hardware or information to sell. They may also use it to seek revenge for real or imagined wrongs such as being passed over for promotion. Sometimes they may use the technology simply to demonstrate to themselves that they have the power over people. This may have been the case with a, a Georgia printing company employee convicted of sabotaging the firm's computer system. As files mysteriously disappeared and the system randomly crashed, other workers became so frustrated and enraged that they quit. Outside users. Suppliers and clients may also gain access to companies' information technology and use it to commit crime. With both, this becomes more a possibility as electronic connections, such as electronic data interchange systems, become commonplace. Hackers and crackers. What are hackers? Hackers are people who gain unauthorised access to computer or telecommunications systems for the challenge or even the principle of it. Crackers also gain unauthorised access to information technology but do so for malicious purposes. Crackers attempt to break into computers and deliberately obtain information for financial gain, to shut down hardware, pirate software, or destroy data. The tolerance for hackers as the benign explorer has decreased. Most communication systems administrators view any kind of unauthorised access as a threat and they pursue the offenders vigorously. And educators also try to point out to students that university cannot provide an education for everybody if hacking continues. Professional criminals. Members of organised crime rings don't just steal information technology, they use it in a legal way as a business tool, but for illegal purposes. For instance, databases can be used to keep track of illegal gambling debts and stolen goods. Drug dealers have used pages as link to customers. Microcomputers, scanners and printers can be used to forge checks, immigration papers, passports and driver's licenses. Telecommunications can be used to transfer funds illegally. As information technology crime has become more sophisticated, in 1988, after the last widespread internet break-in, the US Department created the Computer Emergency Response Team or CERT. Although it has no power to arrest or prosecute, CERT provides round-the-clock international information and security-related support services to users of the Internet. Whenever it gets a report of an electronic snooper, whether on the Internet or on a corporate email system, CERT stands ready to lend assistance. It counsels the party under attack, helps them thwart the intruder, and evaluates the system afterwards to protect against future break-ins. That is the end of section 4. You will have 30 seconds to check your answers.